Uh, today we're going to be talking about infection, and uh, it's quite a bit of information to cover, but the one thing about infection is uh, clearing infection is a very, it takes very simple means. What you can get at a grocery store can often be the difference between life and death on serious infections. Um, and that is re, uh, referring to the garlic paste to the feet. And that can make all the difference. But uh, let's, uh, let's start with uh, topical. Um, we'll, we'll jump into infection, um, dealing with cuts and topical infections, and um, just take a look at those and what we would do for those. And uh, then we'll uh, get into the... Um, uh, infection work as far as the infection uh, programs for uh, more serious infections or what you will do uh, when there is infection in the body and you need to take like antibiotics, um, what you can do naturally. Antibiotics are suppression therapy and in natural healing, we do not suppress infection, we get rid Let's of it. Let's just start with the basics of uh, you have a cut and it's inflamed. You uh, An inflamed cut on the skin, the outside of the body, a good infection salve may be enough to clear it up if it's just minor. If, uh, if the infection is uh, more serious, you will want to use the charcoal flaxseed poultice on it. All of these uh, are found in the infection info sheet, and I also have videos uh, with instructions on how to do the um, charcoal flaxseed poultice and uh, um, the infection salve, of course, is a uh, herbal ointment uh, that you can get that is great for any first aid kit. Okay, one of the things when you first cut yourself or um, have a break in the skin, one of the best things that you can do for that issue is to sprinkle some cayenne in it. If you put cayenne in it, apply pressure, that's going to all but instantly stop the bleeding. And it does a couple other things also. The cayenne speeds the healing where it will heal much more quickly. And it also um, prevents scarring. I have uh, seen major cuts uh, that you would expect to have left horrible scars. And there is no scar when the cayenne is applied right away, right at the beginning of when the accident happens. So the liquid cayenne extract, it not only works as a liquid cauterizer to stop the bleeding, it prevents infection from being able to form in there. And it also speeds healing and prevents scarring. So having cayenne around to use in a first aid kit, anytime there's a break in the skin, it is excellent. And it does not heat up on the outside of the body unless you cover it with a plastic Band-Aid. So when you have a wound or a sore and you use cayenne in it, you need to have cloth bandages around the house. And they make them, all the different companies make them now. It's almost easier to find the cloth ones than it is those plastic bags. Never apply a plastic Band-Aid over a wound that you have treated with cayenne unless you want to be sitting with your hand in an ice bucket. <laughs> it really heats it up. All right. So for topical um, infections, um, we also under that would come bid sores and uh, anything where the body is, where the skin is inflamed and, and there is an issue like that. You want to initially use your charcoal flaxseed poultice, and that is going to pull, draw the infection out and purify the wound. When you have a deep cut or a gash or a bid sore, a decubitus ulcer type thing, it will not heal while there's bacteria in it. You've got to clear it of bacteria or the skin will not close. So that's where the charcoal flaxseed poultice comes in. You apply that, leave that on for four to six hours. That is going to draw the bacteria, infection, whatever, out of that. And then you can apply your uh, healing poultice, which will pack in there and seal it over if it's needed, if it's a deep ulcer. Or um, just put your infection salve on there and uh, uh, cover it up and... Um, Keep it clean and it will heal. 
but it will not heal. A, a topical wound will not heal if there is still infection in it. Now, if that, if you've got blue veins running up your legs, if you've got, you know, really serious infection going on in the skin, you may need to go and uh, do some infection work with the herbal antibiotic and echinacea on top of the drying poultice. Though I have seen the charcoal flaxseed poultice just completely turn that around uh, overnight, uh, even with blue veins running up the lake. So um, it, it is very effective and works very, very well for drawing the, the poisons out and uh, just getting rid of the infection. Um, an example of that would be uh, about 20 years ago when I was out in California, uh, the woman who is now my um, oh my daughter's mother-in-law, um, I met her for the first day. And the first time I met her, she was scheduled to have her toe amputated the next day. She'd had an ingrown toenail removed and it had gotten infected and inflamed. She had used numerous antibiotics. Nothing was clearing this infection. And they had decided they were going to have to amputate her toe. Well, she happened to drop by my friend's house while I was there, and I had my bag with me out in the car, so I just put together a charcoal flaxseed poultice, and I slipped that over her foot, put her sock back on, sent her home, and uh, she had blue veins running up her leg. I mean, it was really getting serious, um, and the next morning, her toe was completely clean. All the blue veins were gone. She blew off the doctor's appointment, and she still has her toe today. So uh, that was a real serious one where even the doctors had decided that the toe needed to come off because they couldn't clear the infection out of it. And all she used was the charcoal flaxseed poultice. All right, uh, moving on from skin uh, infections and things that affect the skin, we want to look at the ears, ear infections. Um, a lot of children will um, just have horrible ear infections. And I think it has a lot to do with their food program, but we're not gonna get into that right now. Uh, the ears are infected, they get water in the ears and uh, just really bad issues. The charcoal flaxseed poultice used over the ears, just put, put it on both ears. If only one ear is affected, you're still gonna treat both ears. And so put the, the poultice on. And then what I used to like to do is just use a pair of pantyhose and put the seat over and then use the legs to tie it around and, and hold the, the poultices in place over the ears. These will be applied as hot as can be tolerated um, right over the ears. And it will tend to pull. I've even seen it pull the fluid out of the inner ear of one little girl, uh, my housekeeper's daughter years ago, uh, her little girl was about ready to go and have tubes put in her ears and she did the charcoal flaxseed poultice on her and uh, the little girl wanders into her mommy she was cleaning the house and uh, the girls were there doing their homeschool and as she comes in and she goes mommy mommy my brains are coming out my ear and uh, her shoulder was all soaking wet and evidently what she was feeling was the suction of the water being pulled out of her ear and it made the poor little thing feel like her um like she was actually losing um, <laughs> something out through her ears when it was just the fluid coming out. Oh. Um, and uh, that was just, it's, that it was amazing to me. I didn't realize it would actually pull the fluid out from the inner ear like that. And uh, others have tried, sometimes it works for fluid in the ear, sometimes it hasn't. But it's definitely worth a try. It's better than going in and having tubes put in the ears. Um, and uh, the, it? yes. Where do you put it? Like, um, around the head, the ear or on the, the ear itself? Okay. The charcoal flaxseed poultice. I have a video of that. Okay. Um, of, of how you make it and all that. It's called the simple infection poultice is what it's called. But on my blog, uh, it's hooked up with almost all the infection pages to have it. And it's in, the written instructions are in today's handout, which you'll get from my blog page, uh, the infection info sheet, uh, okay. the instructions on how to do it. What you're going to do is you're going to end up with two pouches of goop, 
And you want to make those pouches big enough so that they encase the whole half of the head. You don't want to just lightly cover the ears. You want patches on the head, you know, so you've got, you're really covering it. And then just take your pantyhose, a seat, a a pantyhose, put it over and then use the legs to tie around. And the reason that I like the pantyhose better than an ace bandage or anything, as any woman can tell you, pantyhose sag. There's no chance of them drawing. Ace bandages have a tendency, they can get tighter and you can end up maybe causing some strangling or something or tightness on the child's breathing at night while they're asleep. I wouldn't do that. Um, with an ace bandage of any type around the head but pantyhose they tend to lose there's never been any issues with the pantyhose using them to tie the um the ear pieces in place over the head on a child and when you're doing a procedure like that if you're dealing with a very young child have the child sleep with you that night I mean if you have any concern that they're going to start wiggling around or or you know get themselves all tied up in that just put them in the bed with you for one night. It's not the end of the world. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, that will uh, keep you happy, keep them happy, and, and um, it won't be so bad. But um, most of the time, though, the, the uh, nylons, just, they give a little, in, but they keep everything in place. Okay, eyes. Infections in the eyes, all right? And we're going over these quickly of course i've got info sheets for eye health and and the ears and all this but we're covering infections just the infection part so with the eyes what what you will see sometimes is infections on the lids and um uh cysts i've seen quite a few people that have had cysts grow up on their eyes and they just continue to refill Uh, the eye bright formula is excellent. It's going to help. And then you can put the infection salve and just put that right over the eye and make an eye patch. Between that and the eye bright formula, you're getting the waste out of the eyeball itself. And then you're clearing the infection from the eye. And when you have something like that going on, I would strongly recommend that you also use um, the uh, infection formulas. And uh, hello, Anna. And um, the uh, uh, echinacea to support the body in clearing it out. And we'll get into, after we go through the, the topical areas, we're going to get into the actual infection programs and what they are. Sinuses, of course, and all of these infections are in the head. So when you get an infection up here, you really want to get it cleared quickly. It, it's not, it's close to the brain, which is kind of important. Okay. Uh, sinuses, um, sinusitis, or whatever you want to call it, an inflamed infection in the sinuses. Um, there's an herbal snuff that I have seen absolutely wonderful for clearing sinus issues. And um, uh, it, it's intense. It's actually got cayenne in it, and you're snorting this up into your sinuses, but it just melts everything. I have had times when I could not breathe through my nose. Everything was clogged up, and I would sit there and snort this stuff up, uh, and I actually had to go in and start chopping onions just to get my eyes to water and get things to start moving so I could actually breathe enough through my nose to get some of it inhaled up into my sinuses. And uh, onions will get you every time. If, if you can't even snort up into your sinuses to get it in there, um, go chop up some onions and eat onions for lunch. Uh, works really well. And uh, then once you, once you can breathe even a little bit up in there, you just start inhaling the, uh, the snuff powder up into your sinuses and it just melts everything out. It's just, it's great for clearing the sinuses. What's and, that? Uh, it takes down inflammation also in the sinus cavities. Uh, excuse me, I didn't hear the question. What's in the snuff? Cayenne and what else? Um, oh, you're asking me. Uh, it's got golden seal and cayenne, and I believe it's bayberry, but it might be barberry. I'm always getting those two mixed up. Um, and uh, garlic. So that's for sinuses. And of course, 
one of the something that's also going to clear your sinuses is um, horseradish. Uh, if you've ever had wasabi or um, anything like that, it just kind of goes up and just lights up your sinuses. Um, uh, the herbal antibiotic has the horseradish in it. And if you make yourself a hot cup of herbal antibiotic tea and you sip on it, you'll find that it's going to clear your sinuses to some degree. That horseradish goes to your head. So uh, the herbal antibiotic has garlic, dandelion, golden seal, ginger, horseradish, and cayenne. So it's got the herbs to clear infection. It also has the herbs for circulation. And it is an excellent remedy that actually clears infection from the body very well. Um, I use two infection uh, formulas. Our other one is um, the infection formula. It's got plantain, black walnut, golden seal, root, bugle weed, marshmallow root, lobelia. And uh, this formula is all about the plantain, but it goes to the lymphatic system first and uh, clears the infection from the lymphatic system up. And then herbal antibiotic, of course, is coming just in from the top and just going through. So when you have a really bad infection, you, you would want to switch between the two formulas. Uh, and, and get the infection from both sides. But uh, toenails, okay. Fungi toenails, fungi feet, fungus period. Um, this is all the topical stuff. Uh, black walnut is the most powerful antifungal in nature. If you are dealing with fungus and, and uh, fungi feet of any kind, athlete's feet, uh, fungi toenails, whatever, um, there's... Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take everything that touches your feet and you're going to put it in the freezer at least overnight. If you have a deep freeze, that's even better. And you might want to do it for two days uh, if you can afford to do it that long without anything to put on your feet. But this is going to wipe off the, wipe out the fungus from your shoes and socks and all that stuff, which is really important. And then uh, what you're going to do is treat that with black, a black walnut salve and um, a, a real intense formula, but it does dye the toenails, but it is uh, a little more intense than the salve is to actually use the black walnut tincture and make a paste with it. And you, um, you would uh, make kind of a little poultice paste by mixing it with uh, like slippery elm bark powder which is very mucilaginous. It really sticks together. And then you would pack that over your toenails and um, uh, just make a light little paste of it and pack it over there and then wrap it with uh, gauze and then just put dropperfuls of the black walnut tincture onto that. And uh, you would have to continue for two or three weeks just keeping that moist a week or two, something like that. And that is going to kill the fungi off. And then it's going to, your, your toenails are going to be black after this. They will have to grow out. But uh, one of our members in New York that did this, she had a real bad mess with her toenails. And I mean, they were cracked, broken, just terrible. And uh, she said when they grew out, they were pristine, like soon she was a teenager. So uh, it, it is for the real intense program, but it took her a year to, for her toenails and everything to grow back out and to get rid of all the black. So uh, that is, uh, if it's just a mild case, I would just use the black walnut salve. That um, does not stain the, the skin. Um, the oil keeps it from having the stain so bad. But for real serious cases, you would probably want to pack it with the poultice and then put the droppers of the black walnut onto it also. What about and, the feet? Uh, say that again? What about the feet? Like peeling of feet and um, the fungus of that? Yeah. Um, you just put the black walnut salve all over your feet. Okay. Yeah. And if, if they're really sore and kind of broken out a little bit, heated up some, you know, they've gotten sore, use some infection salve first. And uh, that does have black walnut in it, but that's going to clear the, any, any heat or bacteria or infection, you know, minor 
issues that you might have in the area. And then just keep using the black walnut salve every day. Okay. And that will clear it up. And of course, uh, for that, you need to run all your socks, all your shoes, everything through the freezer for two days, a day at least. You know, just put everything in and freeze whatever touches your feet uh, because it lives in your, it's in your shoes. I mean, unless you're rich and wealthier than me and you can run out and buy all brand new shoes all the time, mm -hmm. um, you'll just be reinfecting. And then uh, when you get it all cleared up, you'll want to run your shoes through the uh, freezer one more time. You know, when, when all the symptoms have gone, um, mm -hmm. you probably want to put them through the freezer again. Okay. Uh, just to uh, make sure that, that you don't reinfect yourself. Uh, the other thing that uh, is real helpful when the feet are involved and is that bad is doing a foot soak uh, at night with the hot and cold. You put your cayenne in the hot water and ice in the cold water and you go between the hot and the cold. And that's going to do a really good circulation where you're getting the blood in and you're moving things around. Uh, that is one of the extremity areas of your body, which often gets poor circulation. So doing uh, the hot and cold foot soak is going to ensure that you get circulation into the feet and that when you get the circulation in, you're bringing good nutrients in and you're taking the waste out. So um, when, when you're actually healing something in the feet, I would strongly recommend doing hot and cold soak on your feet and put a, a teaspoon of cayenne per gallon of water that you use. Uh, don't overdo the cayenne. All right. So we have dealt with um, uh, topical infections, ears, eyes, sinuses, toenails, and skin pretty much. Uh, the one thing to remember is if the skin is breaking down, if you've got psoriasis or a, a breakdown in the skin, that is coming from the inside out, you need to ELF. You need to do an emergency liver flush. Your liver is detoxing through the skin and uh, no topical application is gonna clear this up until your liver decides to send the waste out through proper channels. So when the skin breaks down and you've got um, hives, eczema broken out on the skin, the skin is uh, really broken down, but, uh, you can treat that and it will be comfortable using jewelweed or, or um, uh, one of the anti-itch uh, uh, salves will work really well to ease it, but you're not going to clear it up. It would be an absolute waste of money to put infection salve or BF and C or whatever on it because your body is throwing waste out through that tissue and it's just going to continue to re-inflame itself. So uh, to clear skin issues like that, you need to do an emergency liver flush, get that out, and just get the liver cleared out so that it quits abusing the skin. And then the skin will clear up all by itself and you can put some BF and C on it or whatever and make it all healthy again. Okay, let's talk about, um, oh, the last uh, issue topically would be um, STDs, uh, vaginal warts, um, uh, all of the uh, those things. That uh, to clear, if you've got STDs of any kind, uh, sexually transmitted issues, um, a real intense infection program, you need to be extremely aggressive with that. Uh, this can be reversed. Uh, it, it, there are answers for it, but they are not easy ones. And uh, the work will be hard, but it is definitely worth it. We can definitely deal with those, but it will be a very intense infection program for an extended period of time. Okay. Internal infections or uh, bladder infections, um, kidney infections, uh, just whatever infection is in the body, what are we going to do uh, to clear infections and the, um, the programs that, that, we would, um, that we would use? Um, somebody with an enlarged prostate or um, uh, just any inflammation in the body, uh, when, when there's an inflamed condition inside the body, anything, the infection protocol 
is going to help clear this up. The basic infection program is that you are going to do an ounce of echinacea each day and then use either the herbal antibiotic, which is the garlic-based formula, or the uh, infection formula, which is the one that goes to the lymphatic system. Or you can pick, uh, depending on what the infection is, um, if it's really serious, I say go between the two of them and switch every other dose. So at uh, two, if you're doing the regular infection program, it's every three hours. So at three o'clock, you would take herbal antibiotic. At six o'clock, you would take infection. At nine o'clock, you take herbal antibiotic. And every waking three hours, you're going to be switching between the two. You take your ounce of echinacea one time a day. That is the basic uh, infection protocol for um, either a, a light uh, issue or um, at the end of a long issue when you're dropping down your doses. Um, the, when you're doing the, light, uh, the lighter um, infection work, you need to ELF one time a week. So I suggest that you do that you plan to elf every Friday night or pick a night in the week and that's your night for your elf when you're doing basic infection work, when you're clearing an infected issue in your body. And um, this uh, protocol can be used uh, for long term. Let's say that, um, well, I'll just use myself as an example. Um, I, I had really bad kidney and, and uh, bladder infections from the time that I was in preteen um, right up into my 30s. And uh, I kind of lived on antibiotics for about 10 years or better, 10, 15 years. I was either on antibiotics from the doctor or had just come off or was heating up to go back on again. I mean, this was just horrible reoccurring bladder and kidney infections. It was a constant thing. And I could go from just feeling my urine getting hot to peeing blood, sorry, within an hour. I mean, as soon as my bladder started heating up, I had to run to the emergency room and get antibiotics and, and something to ease that up. I didn't know that there were herbals that could actually clear it, but I was on the infection merry-go-round. Okay, when I came into natural healing and learned about the infection formulas and how they work, um, I used them symptomatically. When I would get heated up, when I would have uh, my bladder would become inflamed, I would go on the protocol and do the infection work until it went away. And when the symptoms had cleared by a few days, I would stop. Um, since then, and this is almost 30 years ago, since then I have found and discovered that you can go on the infection protocol and stay on it for two or three months or better and just continue to do the work and you will clear all that infection out of your bladder, your kidneys or wherever it is. Uh, some people when they're children, they get uh, earaches, ear infections, and they've been put on numerous antibiotics for ear infections. Um, this is just suppressing what you take, those antibiotics that you take from the doctor, what they actually contain is a smear of infection. And the reason that they make the symptoms go away is because when you're swallowing that infection, your body just goes, wow, I can't deal with all this. It puts the infection work that it's doing inside of you on hold and pushes everything down to the lower levels. So all your symptoms go away, but you have not cleared that infection. It is still in you. It's just in the lower levels so that you no longer have symptoms. But as soon as your body regains some vitality and gets strong, it's going to get back into that infection work again and start processing all that out. And then you're just going to break out and become inflamed again, unless you know what to do to actually clear it up. So it's, it's what we call the infection merry-go-round. You suppress it, you get some relief, but it's still in there and it will be back. Um, so you can, you have, if you've taken antibiotics for an extended period of time, 
Um, you can go on maybe a, a light to a moderate um, infection program for several months and just clear all that out of your body. And when you're doing uh, the lighter infection work, you want to do an ELF, and that's uh, all explained in the um, uh, info sheet. And I have videos on how to do an ELF. And it's, it's just an ELF is an emergency liver flush, is what that sounds, is what that stands for. It is not a detox. All an ELF is is flushing that liver through and getting the waste out of your liver. Your liver is the vacuum cleaner of your body, and if it is full, it quits pulling, and it will not pull that waste uh, that you are. The die-off is going to get reabsorbed if your liver does not have the ability to pull and draw that out. And the other thing is it's going to push waste out through your skin, which is um, going to uh, give you hives on top of everything else. So you, you really need, when you're doing a good infection program, you really need to uh, make sure that you flush your liver at least once a week on the lighter program. The other thing that you need to do every day that you're taking an ounce of echinacea is you want to consume 32 ounces each day of carrot juice. Carrot juice contains the beta carotene. And the beta carotene is uh, what your immune system, it's vitamin A in the body, and that's what your immune system is built from. So when you drink your carrot juice, you are drinking the um, properties for your body to build the immune system from. Is someone trying to ask a question in there? I, yes. I hear. I think I wanted to ask a question there. Um, sure, Naomi. How are you? I'm good, hon. <laughs> um, for the carrot juice, what if you can get use the carrot powder? Is that okay? It's not as powerful as the carrot juice. Oh, okay. um, it, it's uh, it has to be digested. Um, when when you chew and swallow food and it's got all the fiber and all that in it. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to go into your hydrochloric bath and be broken down and absorbed in. When you juice a carrot and you drink that carrot juice, it goes straight into your blood. The hydrochloric bath is not needed to, uh, <laughs> to, to get it, it in. It's just okay. absorbed. Um, uh, Dr. Malcolm I said, Holly Acres, um, years ago, I, I watched one of his videos and he explained on there, that when you chew and swallow food, you get maybe 28, 29% of those nutrients at cellular level. When you juice and you drink that juice, you get in excess of 98% of the nutrients at cellular level. I mean, that okay. is a huge difference. And it's all that energy that's consumed in digestion. Um, and then, of course, when you're sick, you're making a very poor hydrochloric bath. The hydrochloric bath is one of the most energy consuming things that our body does. And when the body has lost vitality, when you're sick and degraded and you just don't feel good, you don't have, your body doesn't have the vitality and energy to produce a strong hydrochloric bath. So you're getting right. less and less nutrients out of your food and it's a downward spiral. Yeah. Um, you, you, the way you cut that and begin building is you start juicing. That way the nutrients go straight in. It doesn't matter that your system is having a hard time absorbing them. You're getting them. They're, they're going in. Right. All right. Thank you. Um, no problem, my dear. Um, so that is the, uh, um, the light in infection program is you're doing the infection formulas. You're doing your echinacea one time a day, an ounce hey, of it once Dara? a day. Yes. This is Kent in Nebraska. How many carrots does it take to make 32 ounces of carrot juice? When I juice carrots uh, for someone here, I, I tend to plan for a two pound bag each day. And that usually will do it. Uh, or is it four pounds? Those big bags that I get at Sam's Club. I tend to go through one of those a day. Okay. And thank um, you. It might be four pounds. I'm not sure how much that weighs, but um, 
you just the way that you know that you're doing it is you just uh, start juicing and you just put your carrots through, get your carrot juice, and you can add whatever else you want on top of that in the vegetable drink. So okay. you just make sure you've got 32 ounces of carrot juice. And you don't have to drink that all at once. You can break that down and drink it throughout the day. It doesn't have to all be consumed at one and in, in one setting. Um, you can put it in your little jars and, and uh, you know, make it airtight and then juice for the day. But drink it in the day that you juice it. All right. Um, so the light infection work is every three hours, an ounce of echinacea a day, uh, your carrot juice to support your echinacea. And um, I don't think I mentioned this, but echinacea sends a chemical command to your immune system to produce more immune cells. So uh, you need to provide the raw nutrients at cellular level for your body to, um, to build from. And that is in your carrot juice. That's why it's so important that you use the carrot juice. Uh, and then you will want to elf one time a week. One day a week, you will want to elf. The, uh, if, if the infection is rampant um, and, and you really want to, if it's affecting the lungs or, um, or it's really deep in you, you can do the garlic paste to the feet. The instructions for that are in there. That really gets your body on top of the infection quickly. And uh, one of the things that I love about the garlic paste uh, to the feet is it also provides an indication of how how active the infection is inside you. In the morning when you get up after you've left that garlic paste on all night, it will normally change color. And um, if it's bright fluorescent green, that is live viral. And uh, wrap that up, throw it away outside. But you know that that viral is still alive and active in you, and you need to keep doing the work uh, to get rid of it. Uh, if you get up in the morning and um, you look at your feet and it is um, uh, brown to black, that's dead. Uh, your, your body has gotten on top of it. You're just pulling out dead, dead waste. Um, and uh, your body is is, is definitely getting on top of the infection. I would continue doing some work for a few more days uh, just to make sure and clean up whatever. Um, if it's clear, if it doesn't change color, um, that is uh, a bummer, but um, it would indicate one of two things. Either you have no infection in you or your body is just not pulling it out that way. I've had people that with major infection issues and um, the garlic paste did not change color, but they had the effects, their lungs cleared. And um, by noon or one the day after they did it, they were showing improvements just like anyone else who does the garlic paste, but it didn't change color. So that is not 100% positive that it will change color, but when it does, and it does for most people, um, it will give you an indication of how active the virus actually is inside you. And yes, it can come through with black and bright green in the same feet. I've had that with my husband. His body had gotten on top of some of it. It was killing it off, but there was still live viral in there. Um, he likes to do weird things. Uh, so I've seen that too, but you just keep up and doing it two nights in a row is as much as I would stretch in a real serious case. You can do it three nights in a row, but plan to soak their feet in aloe vera gel the next day. They probably will have a chemical burn after the third night. And, uh, it feels like a, a sunburn on your feet from the garlic. Garlic is caustic and, uh, if overused and not used properly, um, it, it will cause a burn feeling to the feet and it can actually blister. So, um, uh, you know, use it with caution, follow the instructions. I've done it on an infant that was only 16 days old. It had pneumonia. It worked beautifully. The child did lose a layer of skin on its feet, but that was a small price to pay for clearing its lungs. Um, 
uh, it, it's definitely effective, but you, you have to be wise. Garlic is a powerful tool, but uh, follow the instructions there. Use the Vaseline. It's dense enough to hold it away from the skin so that you don't burn yourself with it. All right. Where so do you get the recipe? Pardon? Where did you say to go to get the recipe? Um, it's in the infection info sheet. Okay. Uh, that is the download. And I also have a video. Um, I actually have two videos on there. Denise and I made another one on using garlic paste at the beginning of, um, of this COVID mess. And because okay. uh, it really helps clear the lungs and, and keeps the lungs from getting overwhelmed. Okay. So, um, yeah, there's a video. I, there's two videos. One's a cartoony one from years ago. And then uh, the one that we made uh, a couple of years ago now, or a year or so ago. Right. So, um, yeah, that's full instructions. And uh, the written instructions are on the uh, info sheet, uh, the handout for this week's class. All right. Um, so let's look at moderate infection work. All right. You've, uh, and, and when you would want to do it. The moderate infection work is where you're going to take your infection formulas every two hours. So instead of every three hours, you're taking them every two hours. Um, you can trade off between the infection and the herbal antibiotic, or if it's just the common cold or a bladder or kidney infection or whatever, the herbal antibiotic works great all by itself. For men with prostate issues, I find that the infection formula tends to go deeper and, and work better with the prostate. Also for teeth issues. If your teeth are, if you have infections in the mouth, um, I would go with the infection formula. The teeth and the jaw are closed and they're very, uh, they're fed through the lymphatic system. So it's a very closed system in there. And uh, my husband has teeth issues and we have found from experience that the infection formula works much quicker. I mean, a lot quicker than the herbal antibiotic. You would think the garlic would just be wonderful for that, but for some reason, it just doesn't get in there deep enough. And um, it, it just takes forever and drags out where the uh, infection formula within a couple of days, you're just on top of it and um, doing the packs in the mouth and all that. Um, it works really well. The tooth and gum formula. And I forgot to write teeth down um, as uh, one of the uh, topical things. <laughs> Um, the, uh, the tooth and gum formula will, uh, really clear up, uh, in, in infections in the teeth, um, and on the gums, it just increases circulation and gets in there and really helps. I have a crown that will get swollen every once in a while, and I can go in there with the tooth and gum and within just a couple hours, all that swelling is gone and it's just cleared up. Um, and, uh, it's, uh. It's just great for any inflamed issue in the mouth. And then if, it's, if you need to, uh, like you have an abscess or something, you can use the tooth powder, wrap that up, and just put one or two drops of the tooth and gum formula. Not a lot, just one or two drops with the water paste that you make. And uh, just pack that over the affected area. And I like to wrap it in a little piece of gauze and pack it over so that it will stay put. Otherwise, it's going to dissolve and go down your throat. Um, which isn't going to hurt anything, but it kind of wants to stay put. So uh, just uh, roll that up and stick it in the inside the jaw over the affected tooth area. And then uh, my husband, he also likes putting the um, charcoal flaxseed poultice over really hot right over that. And it will just draw quite a bit out. So um, when you've got it inflamed, the charcoal flaxseed poultice can be used topically. And then you can put the, uh, the tooth and the gum powder poultice in between the, the gum and the, and the cheek inside. And uh, that works really well for teeth issues. All right, the moderate work. Uh, when would you uh, kick your program up and why would you? Uh, if the infection is um, uh, pretty intense, it, I, would, I would start in with the moderate. I mean, uh, most of the time, I would say start your program with 
uh, the moderate work, which is every two hours uh, for any uh, serious infection. And um, uh, that would be taking it every two hours. You're still just using an ounce a day of echinacea. And uh, you need to elf twice a week with uh, doing the, uh, the moderate program. You want to elf at least every three or four days uh, and, and get that liver cleared out. Uh, the other thing that you need to understand is when you have an infection in your body uh, and your immune system needs to be up and working well, you cannot use any table sugar. White sugar is poison. White sugar is going to coat your immune cells and shut them down for anywhere from 4 to 12 hours or more, depending on how bad your pig out was. So... Um, you have to leave the sugar out. I mean, and, and look at labels. You do not want sugar. It is going to shut your immune system down and really make you susceptible to whatever's out there and make it very difficult for your body to deal with the infection that you have. So um, for uh, most infection issues, I would say start out with the moderate program. And then after the symptoms clear, um, let's say it's a bladder infection, kidney inflection, uh, whatever. When the symptoms have cleared up, uh, then um, you will want to continue with the lighter infection work for probably three to five days past uh, the, the time that the symptoms have cleared. So, um, you know, continue on with the lighter work, but you probably want to start out with the moderate. Now, the intense infection program, all right, this is used um, when the infection is life-threatening um, or it, you know that you are in a lot of trouble and you just got to get it cleared up. Also, when, you can also use the intense infection program to really kickstart a healing program. I mean, uh, illness uh, is, is all, it's uh, an inflamed condition in the body. And uh, doing an intense infection program is really going to just get your body really cleared out well. Uh, the only thing is you cannot jump in with the intense infection program. You have to build up to it. You want your body, uh, I would never suggest unless you had a life-threatening like my brother did. He had tetanus, and we cleared his tetanus with it. Um, you would uh, you would want to start with the light, and then or the moderate, and then uh, do that for a week or so. Get your body into this mode. Get your liver cleared a couple times, and then do the intense work. Otherwise, um, a lot of the benefit you could get could be wasted because your body isn't ready to give it up yet. You want to get everything softened up so that your body will be ready just to give it up when you do the real hard stuff. Okay, the intense infection program. Here it is, people. And this is hard work. And um, I've, I've used it um, several times for real serious infection. Uh, the one uh, that was closest to my heart was when my brother uh, contracted tetanus. He um, uh, uh, is, was a contractor, and he stepped on a rusty nail, and it went through his boot up into his foot. His case was actually diagnosed. His best friend's father is an MD doctor, and Dr. Bergman, um, he went to Dr. Bergman and, and asked him if he could do a blood test or whatever, and the doctor told him it was symptomatically diagnosed. And uh, he called me the day of the accident, and I shipped him out what he would need. He was in California. I'm in North Carolina. And um, eight days after the accident, it just hit him. It just slammed into his body, uh, the ripping spasms, all of that. And uh, he started on the protocol, and he did it. And within five days, it was completely cleared. Um, and what the intense infection program is, is you are going to do your infection tinctures every hour. And you're going to switch between the, uh, the herbal antibiotic and the infection formula. So every other hour, you're going to be taking the, uh, the different formula. 
He still did use one ounce a day of echinacea. Uh, that can be increased to two ounces a day, morning, an ounce in the morning, an ounce at night, if you need it. If, uh, if one ounce does not support you, if you end up with uh, detoxing headaches, um, flu-like symptoms, anything that's showing that you're not, your immune system is not holding up, then you can take an ounce in the morning and an ounce at night um, and, and double up on that. But most uh, people, um, my brother, when we cleared that, he only had to do one ounce a day. Um, it, it, but it will depend. Um, people are different. Um, and then you're going to take the infection formulas every waking hour. And you're going to do five elf in a row. So you're going to do an elf each night for five nights in a row. This is major detoxing work. It is not to be done lightly. And my hand and love goes up to anyone who can get through this program. <laughs> it is seriously hard work and uh honestly i think i've only done three in a row i might have gotten that fourth one i have it's fuzzy um in my brain whether or not i actually got the fourth one done i can't remember it's been a few years now but um i know i did not make it to five it was just uh, too much work it was uh, i was overwhelmed with it but i was just detoxing it while it was while i was losing the weight and um, I, I just wanted to do a really strong detox. So I gave up after three, I think it was. Um, but it is a powerful uh, program. Uh, of course, uh, you can add in the garlic paste to the feet um, if, if, you, uh, if that's called for. If it's something along the line, like when my brother had the tetanus, we also use the antispasmodics, stop the spasms and all that which are associated with tetanus. Um, and um, he was actually comfortable enough uh, with the antispasmodics and doing the program that he went to work every day and uh, just took his formulas while he was on his job site. And because um, he had a job he, he really didn't want to walk away from at that time. He was pretty busy. And um, he felt good enough to go to work even with all that going on. Man, weird creature. Uh, but that is the intense infection program. Um, does anyone have any questions on these before we get into preventative? And can you all hear me okay? I'm getting feedback in my ear. Please. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I'm, I'm coming through good enough? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just want to ask a question based sure. on the infection program. Um, what about if someone has severely a lot of like bacteria in their system and does the infection um, program work for that as well? Uh, for the bacteria as well? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so would you the, do the an or a moderate? Say that again, you blipped up a little bit. Would you do an intense um, infection program for, um, so he has microorganisms in his, in his system? Are we talking about parasites? Mm -hmm. As, uh, and and in the, the uh, infection formula is going to help, and I would be using the infection formula for this because it's got the black walnut and all that in it, which is anti-parasitical. Right. And um, yeah, you could do, I would bring them up on it. Like I said, I would not just slam them into that program. They right. need to build up and, and be in a place where they're ready to do it, juice fasting and all that good stuff. So they get the very best benefit from it. Um, and, uh, but yeah, that would definitely be uh, beneficial for somebody with real bad par parasite issues. Also, you know, do a, a good a parasite program. Um, Hulda Clark's got a really good one. If you go to my blog, uh, you can um, get her, uh, uh, put in Hulda Clark at my blog, and you'll get her schedule and what you do. And we do support that. So uh, if you need uh, the ingredients for that stuff, we, we do have those. But the infection, anytime there's inflammation, parasites, um, uh, 
bacteria, whatever. The body just needs help to do it. And the, the liver is going to detoxify. These herbs are going to take care of those little things. And um, this is what God's given us to clear issues from the body. Any invaders, anything like that, this is going to be what's going to work. Okay. Um, are there any more questions on the uh, infection program? Um, I'm going to uh, go into uh, preventative routines and... Um, if, yes. Pardon? Yes, um, I'd like to ask a question. Sure, um, who am I talking to? My name is Lisa. Oh, hi, Lisa. Mm -hmm. All right, what can I do for you? Okay, I would like to know about for viral infections, um, say for instance, sexually transmitted ones. Okay, I didn't understand. Did you say thyroid infection? viral because we're talking but, about, we're here about the bacteria parasites and so on so i'm just okay. and asking about viral infections so for instance maybe sexually transmitted um the same infection formula same protocol would work yes and uh if you're if you're working with uh something like vaginal herpes or um uh something where it's an outbreak on the skin you want your black walnut to put down there that is going to uh black walnut works with the herpes uh, the okay. the vaginal warts and the herpes to clear those things when it's an std like that mm -hmm. and then you would be doing the infection uh, protocol internally and i would also add uh, black walnut uh, extract to the infection program for an issue like that um, oh. so that you're getting it internally as well as it's there's some in the infection uh formula but taking extra definitely adds octane to it when you're dealing with um an std or something along that line okay. and this is also uh for shingles um oh. shingles uh is also you know the herpes simplex is, yes. is in the shingles and um, you want the black walnut and then, of course, the pain salve. So you can actually put the black walnut salve on. Um, the, the pain salve, you put that on first and then the black walnut salve over the affected area. And then uh, you can do the infection protocol and take extra black walnut internally. Okay. So, um, and also the cold sores in the mouth benefit from that, um, the infection work. Okay. It's, Thank you. it's all just that stuff. All right. Were there any other questions on um, on the uh, clearing the infection? Let's get on with the preventative routines. And uh, this is what we we want to do when there is uh, whatever going on anywhere. Um, uh, the uh, as, as we are all aware, there's. Uh, some pretty bad stuff floating around out there right now. And so a good preventative, a good daily routine of what you can do to keep yourself fortified so you don't get sick is very, very important right now. Um, and uh, a good preventative routine would be to do ounce of echinacea four days each week. So it would be like Monday through Thursday, you do an ounce of echinacea each day. And um, then you would uh, do, I like to do 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C once or twice a day. And I do a time release that prevents bowel tolerance. And if you don't know what bowel tolerance is, when you hit your bowel tolerance for vitamin C, your bowels will empty really well. Uh, most of us do not want to hit bowel tolerance with the vitamin C. A good time release uh, prevents that from being an issue. Um, so, uh, uh, and if 3000 is too much for you, then, you know, use one or 2000 a couple times a day. Um, I'm not a little person. I have a lot more body mass. So if you're very petite, you would definitely want to shy that dose down a little bit. So, um, your echinacea and that also goes with, uh, everything. I, I, I don't know everyone that's on here, but if anyone's really petite, 100 pounds or around there, 
um, the uh, doses that are given are for uh, an adult dose is for 150 pounds. Okay, that's kind of the rounded number. And it's not written in stone, but you know, if you're if you're 130, 145, whatever, um, just use the adult dose. It, it's not a big deal. But I mean, if you are 100 pounds soaking wet, you probably want to slim that dose a little bit, maybe by a third. And if you're dealing with children, um, you definitely want to, I usually round the child to the nearest 50. Or if it's a really small child, to the nearest 25. And then give them that portion of the adult dose. So they would be getting a third or a half of a third if they're only 25 pounds. Um, and uh, if they're 50 pounds, you would give them one third the adult dose. If they're 100 pounds, they get two thirds the adult dose. And, and um, it's not rocket science. You don't have to be absolutely exact. You can take a guesstimate at it if there's no scale around and you have no idea. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, it's just uh, good to kind of uh, do uh, set the weight carefully. You know, know, know that you're not really, really over detoxing them. Uh, if if you overdo on the um, on the infection formulas and all that, you can just have a, a detox effect where you're just cutting too much waste loose. But honestly, I've used tablespoons of the herbal antibiotic at a time when I had bad kidney infections, and uh, I've taken a, a tablespoon every couple hours of it um, when I was in real bad shape, and it was fine. Um, it's benign, it's not going to hurt you, but you need to be supporting it, um, doing else and other things, if you're going to use those kind of doses. All right, so um, 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C once or twice a day, or what's good for you, and then a super tonic or herbal antibiotic uh, once or twice a day. I mean, we're not talking about, um, you know, doing a, an hourly routine or anything, but you know, maybe when you get up in the morning before you go to bed at night, you just take some super tonic. Now, super tonic is like herbal antibiotic, but it's made with apple cider vinegar, and it only has the veggies in it. Super tonic has um, garlic, um, ginger, horseradish, onion, parsley root, and cayenne. Is what's in, in the super ton, and it's made in apple cider vinegar. So, uh, and uh, by the way, it also makes a great salad dressing to use it as a vinegar part when you have vinegar and oil. It's kind of tasty. But um, anybody who wants that to make their own super tonic, just ask. I'll give you the recipe. I'm making it yourself. We do make it here, but it's not hard to make. And uh, um, that, you can just take a, a shot of that. Um, morning and night as a preventative, or the herbal antibiotic, which is your garlic-based one, you know, once or twice a day, just take a teaspoon of that as a cup of hot tea. And that is an excellent preventative program. Uh, the other, uh, that's a basic preventative program. Now, let's look at the fact that you know you've been exposed to something. You know, you know, you, you've been around someone who is sick. You know that you've been exposed. What can you do to prevent yourself from getting it? I mean, uh, some of these things are so insidious. Um, the lobelia, if you have been seriously exposed and you are testing positive but having no symptoms, uh, you can take a dropper full, one to two dropper fulls of lobelia. Um, every few hours throughout the day or a dropper full every few hours. Um, of, and what lobelia does, lobelia is, is an herb and lobelia opens up the lymphatic system. It keeps everything open. The way these infectious diseases work, and we need to understand this, when there's an incubation period involved, and this goes with whooping cough, uh, the plague, whatever, when there is an incubation period involved where the body is, you've been infected, but you've got, you know, three or four days or a week or whatever for you're showing symptoms, 
um, what is happening during that period of time is the virus has gotten into you. And what it's doing is it's blocking up your system. It blocks up the capillaries and it blocks up your circulatory system and all that and just sends mucus out everywhere and just blocks up your system. And then once your system is all blocked up, it takes over the body. So that that incubation period, that's why for some people, some people that are very unhealthy and um, eat a really bad food program and, and it's just garbage in and garbage out, um, their system blocks up and they might be sick and dead in 24, 48 hours from something. Where someone who lives a healthier lifestyle, it, it takes quite a bit more to try to get their system blocked up. And if they know to use something like lobelia that keeps everything open, then you're, you're opening it up, you're doing your preventative routines, and it just flushes out. It can't get a hold in your system, and it just flushes on out. And you, uh, you don't end up with symptoms, or your symptoms are extremely mild. Um, but um, the lobelia is an excellent um, uh, preventative uh, when you know you've been exposed. Uh, lobelia is not something that you just want to take every day of your life. Uh, it, it doesn't work like that. You will end up uh, really wasting it. Um, lobelia needs to be used when you know you need it. And uh, as a preventative, when you know you've been infected and you're just not showing symptoms yet. Or even if you're just beginning to show symptoms. Um, you can start using lobelia. Let's say you get that little scratchy in your throat and it's just like the day before you know you're going to get something. Go ahead and start with the lobelia. Do your, um, your preventative protocol and there's a good chance it won't get a foothold in you. You're, you're, you, you won't get it. How much do you do that again? Do um, I do uh, my size. I will do one to two dropper folds. Um, uh, and and every three or four hours, it's like it's for me. I do hit and miss um, uh, through the day. You know, I'll I'll think about it. I'll keep my bottle with me when I think about it. I'll take some, and um, and it's it's not every hour by any means. If you overuse Globelia, it will make you nauseous. When we want somebody to throw up, we give them a tablespoon, hold the bucket, and stand back. Um, Lobelia is, uh, you can never overdose on Lobelia because when you take a high dose of it, it induces vomiting. Uh, it, it's a completely safe, benign herb. It is not going to hurt you. Uh, if you take enough, usually it takes six dropperfuls for someone to become nauseated. So two dropperfuls is no big deal. If you okay. find yourself really sensitive to it, well, don't take so much. All but right. uh, you'll, you'll only, you know, one time you get that little nauseated feeling in your stomach, just take some LP and digestive tonic and, you know, it'll go away. But um, <clears throat> don't take that much again. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to throw up for some reason. Uh, but uh, that is Lobelia. Lobelia it just opens up the lymphatic system and allows the waste to move on out so that it cannot get a foothold in your system. So when you know you've been infected, when you've been around someone who is sick, you may want to do that for um, whatever the incubation period would be for the issue. Um, five to eight days, maybe. Uh, it, it's uh, just whatever that time period that's needed to where you know that you're past it and it's not going to get you. All right. Well. I guess we are set. Um, next week, I'm thinking, um, I was thinking arthritis. Well, we will do arthritis next week then, and uh, I will actually show how to put the arthritis packs on and all that good stuff. You guys take care. Have a great week.